my name is Kelly Robertson. I'm a certified professional agronomist, a certified crop advisor, also a soil envoy for Illinois this year. Uh, our company is Precision Crop Services here in Benton. Our specialty is soil fertility and uh, specifically uh, making recommendations on, based on soil tests and, and crops to be grown here in Southern Illinois. So one of the issues with high yield soybeans is that many farmers will plant no-till after corn, but they put all of their fertilizer for their corn and soybeans on ahead of the corn crop. So what the result is, is that like in a 200 bushel corn crop, we're only taking off maybe 125 to 150 pounds of potash in the grain, but we may have over 300 pounds tied up in the fodder in the field. And the result of that is, is that until that fodder mineralizes or that residue mineralizes, we're not providing that potash to the crop, to the next soybean crop. The same thing can happen with cover crops. So if we've got a cover crop, depending upon species and when it's terminated, we don't get the mineralization from the nutrients that it's sequestered. So as they only occasionally plant a cover crop, maybe in the corn stalks or every two or three years, it takes a long time, up to two, three, four years of the nutrient cycling to get the mineralization of that potash and phosphate back into the soil. So in some instances, we're literally limiting our yields because our fertilizer is tied up in crop residues in the field. So, We've got multiple solutions to solve these problems. The first thing is, is don't put all your fertilizer ahead of the corn crop. Go ahead and plan on making at least a potash application to the fields going to soybeans. That way you've got some potash that's not necessarily tied up in residue or in cover crops to be available to that soybean crop. The second thing is, again, treat your soybeans like you would treat your corn. I mean, if you want to grow 250 bushel corn, you're gonna do all kinds of special things because you know that it takes management to do that. If you wanna grow 100 bushel soybeans, you've gotta do all kinds of special things to make sure that happens. And the very first thing that is the most important thing is the conditions in which they're planted. So the day you plant will decide a lot of factors in what that crop's gonna yield. Plant it into a poor environment, smear it in, leave the seed slot open, you're just asking for trouble down the road. So I often hear that soybeans are scavengers, okay? Soybeans are not scavengers. Soybeans are a crop. They need to be taken care of. They need to be monitored and it needs to be managed for high yield and high ROI. If you want to treat your soybeans as scavengers, be prepared for 30 bushel beans, be prepared for essentially no ROI. If you want to treat them as as a high yield crop and manage them accordingly, then yeah, we're, we're gonna have the potential to have tremendous response to the management practices we implement as long as they're timely and done correctly. To solve the problems, we really need to be thinking literally a year ahead of time. And so we need to be cognizant of, you know, hey, we've got a large, we just had a large corn crop. We're gonna have a lot of residue that we've got to deal with. Plus we've got a lot of mat material out there that's got to, to mineralize to make available. So we know we've got to compensate for that somehow. We need to be thinking, okay, just because I can't plant corn doesn't mean I need to go plant beans. Maybe I, I need, actually need to get out of the cab of the tractor and look and see what the soil conditions are. The calendar or my neighbors are not an indication of what I should be doing. The soil is an indication of what I should be doing. Ill Soy Advisor, Illinois Soybean Association, the agronomists that they have there, land grant universities have got some really good research as well as there's a whole uh, list of independent crop consultants uh, throughout Illinois that are more than capable to help you with your questions.